So quickly, I'm going to show you three techniques. Okay, a lot of people have been asking since yesterday how to do these. The first technique is close reduction, arthrogram, and percutaneous fixation for a Jacob 1 or 2 lateral condyle fracture. So this is a 6-year-old child with elbow injury. This is the x-ray. Important to take a, you know, internal rotation view. And there is something important here. What you, when you take this x-ray, you see this translation. It tells you that this is an unstable fracture, needs to be fixed. So it's not fixing in C2, it's reduction and pinning. So I am also board certified, Sandeep, use arm board. Again, bo both of us do a lot of things similar. This is 2016, uh, arm board used to position the, the patient and uh, tunique used. And this is how you would do arthrogram, playing this video. Okay. So first, put a temporary K wire and then do arthrogram. That is the sequence. And this K wire, you know, you are going without drilling through the lateral condyle cartilage. And then you start drilling. That is how it is done. And this is how it's showing on C arm. First, you push and then you drill. And uh, this has to be done also in internal rotation view, not on an AP view. Because the lateral condyle fracture is posterolateral. If you drill in AP, you will not get it right. You have to, you know, put the patient in internal rotation view. And how do you know this is internal rotation view? Radius and ulna are overlapping. If radius and ulna are not overlapping, you know, that, uh, they are, uh, then it is a proper AP view, which you don't want. And this is how it should look on lateral. On lateral, it is going from posterior to anterior. In supracondylar fracture, your wire goes from anterior to posterior. This goes from posterior to anterior because your fragment is posterior. This is how you do an arthrogram after this. You put in a needle lat from the lateral aspect just above the radial head. So this is putting the needle. As soon as you put the needle, since this is a fresh fracture, you will have hematoma. Initially, you can inject air. When you inject air, you know that will be confirmation. Because if you your needle is in a wrong place, and if you put in a dye, your entire view will be spoiled and your fixation will be in problem. So first you inject air, and after injecting air, then you put a dye, and this is how you are putting dye, and when you uh, what you a, What you see by injecting air, means uh, resistance? It's an empty syringe, 5 cc syringe, where you will put push the air inside. So it's not like a spinal, you know, giving spinal, but this air will actually, uh, you know, De uh, delineate and make sure that your needle is in the joint and not somewhere else. So that is how uh, that is done. Sandeep, Sandeep Patwardhan, come, come up here. People will have some question to you also. Yeah. So then this is putting the dye and this dye as you push, uh, it shows you that the articular surface is now you know, in good shape. Of course it is going, it is not going through the fracture side. What you see, the vertical limb, that is the trochlea, okay? So this shows you that it is not going through the fracture. It is delineating the articular surface very well. So I know that my reduction is proper. You see it in AP lateral and oblique views. Pass one more wire, so two wires. And from one of the wires, you will drill and then pass the screw. So compression screw through the metaphyseal side and additional wire to prevent rotations. And then this is a post-op x-ray. At four weeks, you start mobilization out of the plaster. At six weeks, you remove the wire because wire is protruding. It is within the skin, but that hampers the movement. So at six weeks, I remove the wire. And at around six months plus, you remove the screw. What you see here is something very important. You will always see this lateral bump, which will make the parents unhappy. You have to warn the parents that this lateral bump would be there. When you take out the screw, you have a choice to remove that lateral bump so that cosmetically also the elbow appears good. So this is at three years follow-up, she is doing well. The second procedure I want to show you is open reduction and fixation through a lateral approach. So this was a seven-year-old child and had lateral condyle fracture which went into non-union, displaced and this patient, the only option was to do open reduction. So I'm going to show you uh, this was the range of movement before surgery and how to do the open reduction. So Harshad has shown you a similar case, but I use a lateral approach. The incision has to be fairly long 
because you have to go from the lower humerus onto upper part of the forearm. You cannot do this with a small chikat artery incision. So skin, subcutaneous tissue, and the dissection is pretty simple. You will feel the lateral condyle just underneath the subcutaneous tissue. You don't have to dissect much. But from here onwards, you will go anteriorly. You have to go anteriorly from the normal part of the lower humerus, from the ridge of the humerus, put in a spike. So first you expose the lower humerus. Then you go on to the olecranon, on the coronoid fossa. Then you go on to the joint. And actually you have to do anterior capsulotomy so that you can see the elbow joint properly because then only you can get a reduction. So this is going from lateral approach anteriorly, seeing uh, the fragment. You can see that I am not touching my fracture fragment. The, the, the fractured fragment you have to dissect through the fracture. You have to go through the fracture and, and mobilize it and, and reposition it. You should not touch the muscle attachments which come from the posterior aspect, otherwise you, cause, you will cause avascular necrosis. So you are seeing that with help of periosteum elevator, a fine periosteum elevator, I am dissecting at the fracture line and, and mobilizing through the fracture. And once you do that, you will be able to mobilize the fracture. I am holding the fracture with a, with a small Adson forceps. No harsh instruments here, no towel clips, no bone holding forceps. Sometimes you can use wires. So I am using Alice's forceps here to, to sort of uh, mobilize this fragment. And then, then I use a joystick, two K wires to hold this fragment and rotate it in, in, in proper fashion. Okay. So uh, this is one wire. I pass two wires. You require two wires because one wire cannot give you complete rotational correction. So you have two wires and these two wires, with these two wires you can manipulate this fragment, get it into proper position and once you get it in proper position, you can start putting multiple wires to fix this. Typically I pass three wires, one which goes along the joint, one which goes through the capitulum and third one which goes uh, uh, through the column. So three wires and one of these wires will be converted into a screw. So I have a fixation then which has uh, you know, one wire and uh, two screws. Some of the pictures here showing you know, the, the exposure of the joint. Anterior exposure of the elbow joint is very important. Uh, otherwise you will not be able to get a good reduction. Again this is showing at end of the screw fixation how uh, you know, the, the elbow intraarticular portion needs to be controlled. So here finally you have a screw and a wire and uh, the screw is removed first and the, the wire is removed first and the screw is removed later on and this is at 3.5 year follow up you can see good range of movement and quickly uh, what's the time now? Yeah, we have another. Six minutes. So I will show you posterior approach. So this is a latest kid on the block. Uh, we are now using which was told us not to do and that is thanks to Dr. Neil Kamal Mohan who was my registrar in KEM and now he's in UK. Uh, we remembered uh, Neil Kamal Mohan because uh, his father owned um, Mohan Meccan Brewery and he used to Lendon take us Pilsner. for beer drinking session at his brewery that time. But now I remember him for this posterior approach uh, to the lateral condyle. So case here, uh, like how what Dr. Kakatkar showed you is a similar case elbow dislocation with lateral condyle fracture okay and this was the case we were treating and uh, i was really not happy doing a lateral approach in this patient i had read about neil's approach and then we did mri and it showed we read up this approach and uh, the question was should we approach this from front or back as long as you preserve the the vascularity from the lateral side you know whether you go from front or back uh, it really doesn't matter this is the patient who had this gross instability. Okay, the, the elbow would just move medially and laterally. So what we decided to do was to go through a la posterior approach. And I'm going to show you how we did that. So this is on table. The patient is in supine position. And you have to flex the elbow so that you go and go to the back. So it's a position is very tricky here in the supine position to do that. It's a curvilinear approach going close to the olecranon. And uh, as soon as you cut the skin and the fascia and separate the muscle, immediately you see the fragment. So I feel this is much easier than doing anterolateral approach to the lateral condyle. You, know, you, you see the articular surface, 
you see the fracture fragment very easily you can drain out the hematoma the most of the humeral condyle is posterior and that's why this become very easy you can put in the spikes and you can see the fracture surface here you have to keep the attachment of the muscle to this fragment intact and this fragment is completely rotated the fracture is facing laterally the articular surface is facing medially so very gently with wash and gauze pieces you clean the clots and then again to manipulate this fragment you insert two k wires one which is going parallel to the articular surface and other one which is going perpendicular to it so that we can rotate this fragment easily so these two wires are used to sort of joystick this fragment so that you minimally manipulate this fracture fragment the reduction you can see beautiful reduction in this posterior approach and then fixed with two k wires one going parallel to the joint and second going actually through the olecranon on fossa because this is a four point fixation and gives a very very solid uh, fixation here yeah. this child did not have a big metaphyseal fragment so i did not put a screw but we put three wires buried all of them inside the skin because this fracture will take a longer time to heal and you don't want to keep the wires out and remove it prematurely and that's showing the closure uh, immobilized for 3 weeks started mobilizing you know once uh, you know fracture became gummy and the 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 wires were removed at at 2 months so now we've had learnt uh, these four procedures uh, pinning in c2 i have shown you open reduction with lateral approach uh, and we have also shown you open reduction with posterior approach so it's been a good session we started with a case uh, from uh, uh, dr harshad where he showed a lateral condyle which was delayed presentation and he fixed and showed a good result then we had a fantastic surgical demonstration from sandeep a type 3 supracondylar fracture uh, fixed with his ambo technique uh, with two lateral pins and all the details were discussed and then we had two great cases from dr agashe showing open reduction anterior open reduction and his his uh, his approach the lighthouse the door the danger and the uh, valley okay 